Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2023 Kia EV6 GT line. Now, I've already covered an EV6 in a prior review, but it was a wind trim level. At this moment, until the high-performance EV6 GT comes out, the GT line is the top trim level, and there's a lot of really unique features to it. I've got the link to the EV6 wind review down in the description where I also go into more in-depth comparing between the EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 which I also have a full review for and that link will also be in the description below. In this video though I want to focus more on the EV6 in particular and we'll talk a little bit more about the upcoming GT as well. As with all of my reviews, I'm going to cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. We've got a whole lot of stuff to cover, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. For 2023, the Kia EV6 enters its second year of production. It's an all-new car representing the brand's first dedicated battery electric vehicle. It also signals the U.S. launch of Kia's Plan S strategy that will deliver 11 all-new electrified models across the world by 2026. Starting with the EV6, Kia's EV lineup will carry a unique naming convention. The EV designation will be followed by a number that indicates the car's position in the lineup. The EV6 offers best-in-class ultra-fast charging from 10 to 80 percent in as little as 18 minutes and rides on a new electric global modular platform, which maximizes development efficiency and enables the Kia brand to expand its EV portfolio across multiple vehicle segments in a short time with minimal complexity. The architecture provides an adaptable foundation with a long wheelbase and a wide stance. The EV6's proportions unify Kia's all-new Opposites United design language, which combines classic sports car inspiration with high-tech cues and a coupe-like profile. The EV6 has the same 114.2-inch wheelbase as the Kia Telluride and compares with the width of a Ford Mustang Mach-E and the wheelbase of a Tesla Model Y. The Hyundai Ioniq 5's wheelbase is a touch over 118 inches long. Like the Ioniq 5, the EV6 is one of the most visually exciting new cars I've seen lately. Of course, I'm mainly speaking within the segment this competes in. There are so many derivative designs out there nowadays with similar shapes, similar features, and similar proportions. The EV6 and the Ionic 5 offer unique experiences that are hard to match in the current EV market. While the two cars share the same basic platform and underpinnings, they're also pretty different from one another. Some of my favorite styling cues on the EV6 include the headlamps, which offer a sequential dynamic light pattern, the high rear deck, which doubles as a spoiler, the cross car rear LED light cluster, and the wide roof spoiler with LED accents that light up the C pillars. I could go on and on, it's just a cool looking car from every angle. The GT line differentiates itself with sportier front and rear fascias, smooth body-colored wheel arch moldings, sportier rocker panels, and unique wheels. Flush automatic door handles provide clean surface styling and enhanced aerodynamics. It's not something you see too often as only a few manufacturers use a similar style door handle. On the GT line, when you unlock and lock the car, they pop out and retract automatically, whether you use the remote or the touch-sensitive smart key system. If you have the smart key in your pocket and just walk up to the car, the car will also recognize you automatically and pop out the door handles. Across the lineup, there's nine exterior colors and six interior themes to choose from. As far as the trim level, the EV6 will initially be offered in light, wind, and GT line trims. 
Later this year, a high-performance dual-motor GT model will be launched, which will boast 576 horsepower, larger brakes, a limited slip differential, larger wheels, adaptive dampers, and a plethora of unique styling touches. The light trim is offered in rear-wheel drive, while the wind and GT line variants are available in rear-wheel drive or dual-motor all-wheel drive configurations. In addition, all EV6 buyers will receive a charging credit of 1,000 kilowatt hours that's usable over a three-year period. Base pricing ranges from $41,400 to $56,400. When equipped with a single motor and rear-wheel drive, the EV6's EPA-estimated driving range on a single charge is 310 miles, unless you opt for the light, which is 232 miles. The optional all-wheel drive system can be had for an additional $3,900. Not only does the additional motor give you a significant boost in power, but you also have the added traction of a permanent all-wheel drive system. The only downside is that the estimated maximum driving range drops to 274. The GT line comes fully loaded with all of the EV6's available features and equipment. The only two additional options shown here include the steel matte gray paint and the GT Line suede seat package, which costs $695 and $295 respectively. This example also has all-wheel drive. The total MSRP for what you see here, including destination, is $58,105. The EV6 is available with a range of drive motors to fit the needs of pretty much anyone. At its heart is an energy-dense nickel-cobalt-manganese battery pack that's available in two sizes, 58 kilowatt hour and 77.4 kilowatt hour. The low-mounted underfloor pack delivers energy to both rear-wheel drive and dual-motor all-wheel drive electric motor layouts with varying horsepower at the front and rear axles for impressive traction and capability. The 58-kilowatt-hour battery pack is only available in the light and is paired with a 168-kilowatt rear motor. It produces 167 horsepower and up to 232 miles of driving range. The larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack can be coupled to two electric motor layouts, a single rear motor or both front and rear motors. The dual motor setup gives the EV6 all wheel drive capability and produces a combined output of 320 horsepower and a whopping 446 pound feet of torque. Keep in mind that's near instantaneous torque too. With the dual motor configuration, the EV6 can accelerate from a standstill to 60 miles an hour in about 4.6 seconds. With the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and the single rear motor, you get 225 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque, of course, rear wheel drive, and a maximum driving range of 310 miles. The dual motor has a maximum driving range of 276 miles. The top speed is limited to either 115 or 117 miles per hour depending on whether you have rear wheel drive or all wheel drive respectively. Also, when properly equipped, the EV6 can tow a trailer with a capacity of up to 2,300 pounds. What I'm really excited to learn more about though is the upcoming EV6 GT, which will offer larger front and rear motors. 160 kilowatt and 270 kilowatt respectively, and a whopping 576 horsepower and 546 pound-feet of torque, which should launch the car to 60 miles an hour in just 3.4 seconds and help it reach a top speed of 161 miles per hour. The EV6's transmission is a single-speed reduction gear unit with a shift-by-wire controller in the center console. You simply put your foot on the brake and twist the dial to the left or right to put the car into gear. Park is engaged by the button in the middle of the controller. Rotating the dial half a click selects neutral. There's also several drive modes including Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Snow. The digital instrument cluster changes its layout based on the modes selected. 
It's very futuristic looking, especially when sport mode is activated. If there's a particular gauge layout that you prefer but don't want to be in a particular drive mode, you can also go within the infotainment system and manually select the gauge layout. Throttle response was the most notable difference between the drive modes. The EV6's EV platform offers standard 800 volt charging capability, but it can also accommodate 400 volt charging without the need for additional components or adapters. The multi-charging system is a world's first patented technology that operates the motor and inverter to boost 400 volts to 800 volts for stable charging capability. With a typical fast charger, the EV6 can charge from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. If you only have 5 minutes to spare, the EV6 can recoup about 70 miles of range with a fast charger. With the larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in particular, using the standard 10.9 kilowatt onboard charger, a full charge can be completed in 7 hours and 10 minutes using level 2 charging, which requires having an appropriately rated 240 volt outlet installed wherever the car will be parked. That time is perfectly reasonable in my opinion, considering it can be plugged in and left to charge overnight to be ready first thing in the morning. A regular 120 volt household outlet is not a viable charging option as they don't deliver enough current, resulting in significantly longer charge times. Real world charge times will vary based on the battery's starting state of charge, the battery's condition, output of the charger, vehicle settings, and outside temperature. In my experience, the EV6's EPA driving range was right on par, but depending on how much you're using the air conditioning, what fan speed you have set, what drive mode you're in, and general electrical draw from using the car's other accessories, your total range will vary. The lid for the charge port is in the back of the car on the passenger side and is power operated. There's even an LED charge status indicator. With energy density enhanced by around 10% compared to existing EV battery technology, the EV6's battery packs are lighter and mounted lower in the body to further increase cabin space. There's also a new separate cooling block structure which helps make the battery pack more compact. The EV6 Wind and GT line also provide an innovative V2L function, which stands for Vehicle to Load. It allows customers to freely use or charge any electric devices such as electric bicycles, scooters, or camping equipment. It basically can serve as a power station on wheels, with 1.9 kilowatt of peak power using a standard 120 volt household outlet. The V2L function is enabled using an available accessory adapter and goes into the outside charging port. A second 120 volt outlet can be found beneath the rear seat for charging laptops, phones, and other devices. One feature that some of you might find interesting is active sound design. Naturally, EVs are quiet. You don't have an engine humming in the background. So if that's a deal breaker or you would just prefer to have some kind of background noise, you can go within the infotainment system and turn on active sound design, which is completely customizable. There's three different tracks to choose from, cyber, stylish, and dynamic. You can change how the sound ramps up and changes pitch based on throttle response. You can change the volume. It's actually pretty cool. So I've got a few different clips coming up that show the differences between the three different audio tracks. Apparently, the EV6 GT, when it comes out, will have some unique tracks of its own. So that'll be pretty neat to try out.
The EV6 is available with a couple of wheel styles. The light and wind are only offered with 19 by 7.5 inch wheels and 235.55 tires. The same wheels are standard on the GT line, but only with the rear wheel drive version. When opting for an all wheel drive GT line, you get an exclusive set of gloss black 20 by 8 inch 5 spoke wheels with machined faces and integrated covers that hide the lug nuts for a cleaner look. They are wrapped in 255-45 all season tires. The EV6 has four wheel disc brakes, with each disc spanning 12.8 inches in diameter. The front discs are internally ventilated, the rear discs are solid. They provide good feel and stopping power and are able to bring the car to a stop from 62 miles an hour and about 147 feet. Brake energy regeneration is also standard, along with hill start assist, 4-wheel, four 4-channel, four 4 sensor ABS with electronic brake force distribution and an electronic parking brake. There's also a one-pedal driving feature, which lets you speed up and slow down using only the accelerator pedal. What looks like paddle shifters behind the steering wheel are actually paddles to increase or decrease the amount of brake and force being applied when using one-pedal driving. It's really quite fun when you get used to it. It also serves as a functional benefit through additional energy regeneration. You can track how much regen has taken place through the digital instrument cluster. The battery pack is flat and spans the entire length of the vehicle's floor. By placing the pack low and central to the vehicle's structure, it certainly improves interior space but it also does a lot for improving handling due to lowering the vehicle's center of gravity. This is not intended to be a sports car necessarily, but it is a whole lot of fun on the back roads, especially with the near instant torque that EVs are known for. The EV6's suspension is fully independent, with McPherson struts in front and a 5 link setup in the rear. On the road, the car not only handles well, but it rides well too. It's very comparable to the Ionic 5 despite its 4 inch shorter wheelbase. The suspension soaks up the bumps nicely, but it's firm enough to feel sporty. It's a nice, well-balanced ride. The steering features electric power assistance with a motor mounted directly to the steering rack. While there's not much feel to it, it's quick and responsive with excellent precision, making it even more fun in the curves. It takes 2.67 turns from lock to lock and has an overall ratio of 14.26 to 1. The turning diameter measures 39.3 feet. The steering wheel is adjustable for tilt and reach and is wrapped in leather. It incorporates a plethora of controls to operate the radio, hands-free telephone system, driver's information system, the natural voice recognition system, cruise control, and some of the driver assistance features. On the GT line, you get an exclusive D-shaped steering wheel for a sportier touch. The driver's information system within the digital instrument cluster includes multiple displays, such as an augmented reality display to complement the heads-up display, drive information, navigation, and a power distribution monitor that shows how power shuffles throughout the car. The EV6's interior leans more towards modern sportiness. It's very well put together and insulated from the outside world. During my week of driving, I never noticed any creaks or rattles, which was impressive. Many of the interior touch points, including the seats, headliner, door trim, floor, and armrest, use eco-friendly, sustainably sourced soft-touch materials. These materials include recycled bottles, plant-based yarns, natural wool yarns, and bio-paint with plant extracts. The mixed materials create a unique interior theme that's exciting to look at. Some of the materials inside the Ionic 5 seemed a little bit nicer, but overall, the EV6 is pretty nice too. On the light, a combination of cloth and leatherette seating surfaces are standard, while a high quality leatherette material is used on the Wind and GT line. The GT line is also available with suede seat accents as shown here, as well as unique interior color accents to dress things up even further. 
Other GT line specific touches include the flat bottom steering wheel, different upholstery patterns, aluminum sport pedals, glossy black trim accents, a unique dash finisher, and an expansive LED accent light system that lights up the floors, door pockets, center console, and dashboard. The accent lighting was by far one of my favorite styling cues. It reminded me of something you'd see in the game Cyberpunk. The leatherette is supple enough that you would think it was genuine leather, and the upholstery is perforated. Thanks to the long wheelbase, short overhangs, and the EV platform's shift-by-wire system, the cabin is quite roomy. In fact, it's one of the roomiest in its segment. The two main differences between the interiors of the EV6 and the Ionic 5 is that the EV6's center console is fixed and the driver's seat is not offered with the same relaxation function like what's available on the Ionic 5. The EV6 is equipped with an 8-way power adjustable driver's seat with lumbar, memory settings for the driver, and heated front seats. The Wind and GT line add ventilated front seats, as well as an 8-way power passenger seat with lumbar. A heated steering wheel is also available. The seats are quite comfortable. The EV6 seamlessly integrates advanced technologies for an enhanced digital user experience. A Meridian Premium Surround Sound System is standard on the Wind and GT line and features 14 speakers with a subwoofer. It's an awesome sounding system that's made even better thanks to the excellent interior insulation and acoustics. The wide configurable dual display cockpit features a 12 inch full touch infotainment system and a hoodless 12 inch instrument cluster that can be customized to meet your needs. The infotainment system is super responsive and features high resolution graphics with a capacity touch interface just like a smartphone. It's a low glare display too, which is nice. If taking a trip, the navigation system provides real-time travel radius mapping based on the current state of charge, while the connected car services also help search and plan the best route to include charging stations along the way. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto look great on the widescreen display. They're standard on all models. Bluetooth multi-connection support is also available, so two devices can be paired at the same time, one for making calls and one for streaming audio. For those times where you're just sitting idle and feel like relaxing for a bit, there's a Sounds of Nature ambient system that offers six calming themes so you can create a peaceful retreat. Within the infotainment system, you can operate the entire climate control system, which is nice. However, one of my favorite features is the climate control panel beneath the infotainment system. The EV6 offers dual zone climate controls, and on every trim level, you have a new touchpad system that combines the climate and audio controls. By tapping an icon on the left side of the panel, you can seamlessly switch between them. I've never seen anything like this before, and it's really cool to see in this particular segment. The touch panel is super responsive and easy to use. It also adds to the overall modern theme of the interior. This is a unique feature to the EV6 that is not shared with the Ionic 5. The EV6 is packed with a plethora of active and passive safety systems, not to mention a suite of standard driver assistance technologies. The Wind and GT line offer additional functionality, but all trim levels, including the light, come with the same 21 basic technologies, including forward collision avoidance, parking distance warning, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, lane keeping assist, lane following assist, speed limit assist, driver attention warning, highway driving assist, high beam assist, blind spot collision avoidance, and more. On the Wind and GT line, you also have more than just your standard backup camera. It's a surround view monitor that gives you a 360 degree look all around the vehicle. You also have blind spot view monitors, which appear in the digital instrument cluster as soon as you flip on a turn signal. A heads up display is also available, 
along with an augmented reality mode, which essentially turns the windshield into a display screen. You can choose to use AR technology to project relevant information such as turn-by-turn -turn navigation, advanced safety in the car's surroundings nearly four feet in front of your line of sight on the road. This allows you to process information quickly while keeping your attention on the road ahead. There's also a display within the digital instrument cluster that incorporates the AR technology. When it comes to airbags, there's dual front airbags, driver and front passenger side impact airbags, a driver's knee airbag and side curtain airbags for the front and rear passengers with rollover sensors. Something else I found super cool is the remote smart park assist feature, which allows you to park and retrieve the car from the tightest of parking spaces from outside the vehicle before attempting to load passengers or luggage, which can prove particularly useful. You simply use the smart key to move the car forward or backward into or out of a parking space, garage, or any tight parking situation. The EV6 is offered with a powered sunroof on the GT line, while the Ionic 5 is offered with a fixed glass panoramic sunroof with sunshade. The larger sunroof definitely gives the Ionic 5's interior an even greater sense of openness. However, overall interior dimensions are very similar between the two cars. The EV6 has a roomy back seat that's very comfortable, however, there are a few key features missing when compared to the Ionic 5. Overall interior space, like I said, is very similar to the Ionic 5. The biggest difference is with cargo space, which is a bit less in the EV6 due to its shorter wheelbase. The nearly flat floor allows for up to three folks to sit comfortably with good legroom. There's LED lighting, plenty of storage, overhead handles and coat hooks, and even USB charge ports on the inner portions of the front seat backs. Being 5 foot 10 inches, I had plenty of head and leg room to spare. There's three adjustable headrests and a fold down console with cup holders. The rear seat is soft and supportive, just like the front seats, and the upholstery is perforated. Like the Ionic 5, the EV6's rear seats can recline so you can kick back and relax. However, they cannot be slid back and forth. Adjustable air vents are mounted in the B pillars for extra comfort. On the GT line, you get heated outboard seats. Child seat anchors can be found in all three rear seating positions. The Wind and GT line comes standard with a hands-free smart lift gate which senses the presence of the key fob as you walk up to the back and opens the lift gate automatically. This makes it effortless to load cargo if your arms are full and eliminates the need to swing your foot underneath the back bumper like other similar systems out there. Of course, there are buttons to open and close the lift gate if you weren't using the hands-free function. Out back, there's a cargo privacy cover, the 60-40 split folding rear seat, and a compartment underneath the trunk floor. The floor can be positioned in different ways depending on what you're hauling. It can also be removed completely for easier stowage of taller vertical items. The EV6 provides 24.4 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats which can be expanded up to 50.2 cubic feet by folding the rear seats down using the levers on each side panel. In comparison, the Ionic 5 offers 27.2 and 59.3 cubic feet respectively. With the trunk floor in place, you have a flat loading surface up to the front seats. On either side panel, there's a D-ring if you need to tie something down, in addition to LED illumination and a single 12-volt power outlet. Storage space throughout the rest of the interior is plentiful. There's large felt-lined door pockets in the front and rear, a cavernous glove box, front seat back storage pockets, plenty of open space beneath the front center armrest as well as additional space underneath the floating center console with USB outlets and 12 volt outlets. A wireless phone charger is standard on all trim levels and of course there's cup holders front and rear. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Kia EV6 GT line. 
Be sure to stay tuned next time and leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because of course there's always a lot more where that came from. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.